Hey everybody, this is Rich and this is Beekeeping with Rich. Today I'm going to show you how to make a real simple solar wax extractor. Uh, let me preface by saying that I've made many, many solar ovens over the years. I've made so solar ovens that were so good that I was able to cook chili from scratch in the middle of an open field. In fact, the first iteration of this uh, solar oven that I made for this was too efficient and it was getting the wax up to where it was darn near boiling. You only need 160 degrees. And so I had to scale back and make this one a little less efficient. Now, understand before you think I'm showing off too much here, I am in South Florida. Anybody with a cardboard box can make a solar oven that will go to 175 degrees without even trying. Uh, and in this case, we only have to go to 160 degrees to melt wax. So this is as simple as it gets, but don't worry if you're in a colder climate or have a lower sun angle than we do. I've got a tip to show you for that too. So let's start with my solar oven. My solar oven is built on the same dimensions as an eight frame deep. I didn't use an old eight frame deep, I just used some pieces of wood, slapped them together, but I made it the same size so that it was efficient for storage. Painted the inside black. Because I happened to have it, I put some foam sheets in here to insulate it a little bit further. That's not a necessary step, but it's there. The heart and soul of this solar wax melter is a paint tray. And I understand this one is nasty and dirty and you can't see a lot. The most important thing you need to see is right here. In the front, you cut a little piece out, you pound that down a little bit. And if you want to take the time in a hammer, you can flatten out some of the ridges here. That's not necessary. Uh, I just happen to do it. The other thing you need is a silicone tray of some sort to put underneath here, just for the ease of it. So I'm going to uh, angle this thing up so that you guys can see it. Okay. Notice, if you would, this screw sticking out up here. Notice that the tray has a hole in the back of the deeper side of it. Notice that the hole slips over the screw so that this slants down into the silicone tray underneath. This is how, once heated up, the wax flows forward, flows down into there. You can further refine it after that, but that extracts it from the everything else that isn't wax in the comb. The most brilliant part of this is this scrap of plywood underneath here. Doesn't have to be anything fancy, it can be warped or anything else. And you need something high tech like this chunk of firewood to stick underneath here to set the sun angle. What you want is for the angle of the sun to be such that when it comes across here, the shadow, it doesn't matter if, as long as the shadow is striking below this point right here. Boom. You don't want shadow up in here, you want full heat, but it's not a bad idea to have the shadow just so it touches, kisses right here because that means the wax down here gets cooler faster. So box, screw, hole in the back, hole in the front, something to catch the wax. All we have to worry about now is what do you put on down? And of course, your angle adjustment. <laughs> All these people who do all this fancy stuff with a couple of legs back here, you adjust it like this, adjust it like this. Well, guess what? This works just fine. Any old piece of wood. Now, as I said, the first time I set this up, it was like, okay, low hanging fruit when it comes to solar ovens is to do a double pane of glass. Now, as it happened, I had uh, panes of uh, plastic, but that usually works fine too. In this instance, since I had gotten into beekeeping, I had these replacement covers 
or re replacement perimeters for queen extractors or queen excluders. So it's like, oh, this is just easy as can be. I put together two queen excluders with two sheets of plastic, tied them together. And I literally mean I tied them together. I didn't even glue these. This is two little holes drilled, two little pieces of wire tight stepped in there. I can take these apart in a heartbeat. You put a rubber seal gasket, any old uh, window seal will do. A rubber seal on here, put the two together. For safety's sake, you tip these up. These two little tabs, set your angle and go. You'll notice it got so hot in there that it melted. The, the bottom one started melting and bowing down in there. And the temperature was at 245 when I came out to check it a little while later. And the wax was bubbling. It's like, oh, not a good idea. So I really quick like did a quick replacement and as so often happens, it just never got changed. I took an odd pane of glass, epoxied two strips down either side, used the same tabs as are right here. The seal takes it all the way around here. And the seal, even with this, I took a knife and I cut this little gap right here. It's a quarter of an inch gap in the seal to allow excess humidity and some excess heat to get out. So that's on there. The piece of glass let rest on the rubber gasket. It's not going anywhere. The sides support it that way. The front is supported by the tabs. Single pane of glass is all you need to get enough heat in there to melt your cappings. Mind you, I said your cappings. Uh, you really want to use this primarily for cappings and then for reprocessing wax that you might have gotten from your old comb. If you put old comb in here, the first thing that's going to happen as the wax starts to melt is that a lot of matte wax is going to get absorbed into the webs that are in the comb. And that wax isn't going to come out. So it's a real waste to put old comb in here as a step one situation. You're much better off using the boiling method or steam extraction, and I'll show that in another video sometime. Uh, but you're much better off breaking old comb up, putting it into a cotton bag, putting it in a large container of water that you is sacrificial. The container is sacrificial to that purpose from then on if you want to have a happy wife and a happy life. Uh, you boil it. The wax all comes to the surface. You let everything cool overnight. You take that wax on the surface. There's going to be a lot of gunk on the back. You scrape off most of that gunk. And then you can take that plug of wax and reprocess it using the solar extractor here. And the way it works best, just like we use that mesh net when we were doing crush and strain, you can put the wax in that same mesh and put that mesh in here the wax will melt, flow out through the mesh, and any junk that's in there will remain inside the mesh, and it'll flow on out. Uh, this is primarily good for young white or just light yellow honey, honeycomb and cappings and things like that, or reprocessing wax that was gotten from older comb. Uh, and I would like to mention one thing about when you're processing with a boiler for old comb. This is from a manual from the Royal Society of Chandlers, which is candle makers. Uh, the bee clubs of Britain asked the chandlers to tell them what they could do to make better wax to sell to the chandlers. And one of the primary things is you take rainwater or very soft water rainwater is best, you break your old comb, your dark comb, your black comb you're not going to use anymore, you break that up, 
you put it in rainwater overnight so that the cocoons and things that are in the comb get saturated with water. And then the next day you boil it, you bring it to a boil or to a simmer really, not a boil. You bring it to a simmer in a container again of rainwater. Because if you use hard water, you'll end up with a gray scum on the underside, which is, you can reprocess it all you want. If you're using hard water, you're always going to have the gray scum. If you, re if you use rainwater or very soft water, then you'll have beautiful yellow comb or yellow wax rather without any of that scum on the bottom that you need to keep scraping off. But that's just how simple this is. I mean, I, I don't think it's possible to get any simpler. A box, piece of glass on top, just one piece of glass on top if you're in a tropical or subtropical climate like I am. Double pane is good if you're in a colder climate. Do I find it necessary to put a reflector back here? I actually did design one for it, but I've never had any call to use it because I don't process wax at this time of year, and this is the only time of year it would be possible to use it. Most of the time down here, the sun is more than intense enough to do the job. So that's it. Quick and easy, inexpensive. The heart and soul of the matter, as I say, is nothing more than a nice paint tray and a dollar store find of a piece of uh, silicon tray to catch the wax down in there. That's it for now. Have a happy New Year's. This is Rich with Beekeeping with Rich signing off.